Hello folks and welcome to GED Microlearning. My name is Dr. MCR and today uh, we are covering GED Math Test 15. In our first question, it's a basic arithmetic question involving uh, rounding numbers. It says, Bill bought several items at the grocery. One of them was valued at $3.5, $0.99, $7.11, and $2. And the question says, round his bill up to the nearest tenth. So the first thing that we have to remember is uh, where you know the tenths are, the ones, the hundreds, the thousands, etc. First thing you do is you locate your decimal point. And we're going to start moving to the left. So the first position to the left of the decimal point is the ones. If you multiplied the ones by tens, the next position to the left are your tens. If you multiply 10 times 10, the next position is 100. And if you multiply 100 by 10, the next one is 1,000. OK, so every position is going to be multiplied by 10. And then if we look at the numbers on the right side of the decimal point, we have it's the same sort of uh, scenario. But in this case, they're called tenths, hundredths, thousandths, etc. OK? So this is where the question is asking us. They're asking us to round that to, to that nearest tenth. So first thing you would do, um, just add his bill. It's $13.15. And that's the position that we're interested in looking at, the tenths, so right there. The rule for rounding is this. So if you look at the to the number to the right of where you have to round up, okay, in this case you would look at the 5. If the digit is 0, 1, 2, 3, or 4, you would round down. And if the digit is 5, 7, uh, 5, 6, 7, 8, eight or nine, you would round up. So in this case, our, um, our number to the right of the number that we have to round up is a five, so we would round up. Okay, so it would be 13.20. Okay, answer C. Question two is an applied arithmetic problem that looks at rate. Ricardo drives from him, his home to the supermarket 15 miles away and then drives back home. If it takes three hours for the entire trip with one of those hours for shopping, at what rate was he driving? And notice that all the answers are in miles per hour. Okay, so that's really important. When they're asking you anything per hour, it's a rate problem. And this is a formula that is super useful to know rate is equal to time multiplied by distance. So if we go back to our problem and we say uh, rate is equal to time multiplied by distance, we know that the trip took three hours, but only two of those hours um, were spent driving. So that would be our time, two hours. And the distance was 15 miles. So you would simply multiply those two numbers, giving you 30 miles per hour, which is question answer B. Question three is an algebra problem, and this is one of those setup problems where they're asking you not for the answer, but how you would solve a problem. Paul has $5 more than twice the amount Sean has. The X represents the amount of money Sean has. Which of the, uh, which of the uh, expressions below rep represents how much money Paul has? All right, so let's go back to the question. And it tells us x represents the amount of money that Sean has. So we say that Sean has x. And then it tells us that Paul has twice the amount of Sean. So that would be 2x. And he also has $5 more. OK, so that would be Paul. 2x plus 5. Answer A. Question four is also an algebra problem, and this is asking you to um, add these terms. And 
Here what you have to realize, this is actually a pretty straightforward question, but sometimes it throws people off. And all you have to do is look at the similar terms. So first of all, add all your x's. So 10x plus x would give you 11x. And then add all your y's. 3y minus 5i y gives you negative 2y. So your correct answer would be 11x minus 2y which is answer A. And our final problem is a geometry problem uh, regarding cylinders. So don't forget that for geometry, they give you all the formulas that you need. But of course, it is very important for you to actually have an understanding of how to apply these formulas. A glass is filled uh, 5 sevenths with water. Actually, that's not very representative, but let's say it's, it's filled five sevenths with water. And it asks you, uh, what volume of water is in the glass rounded to the nearest unit? All right, so the first thing that they're giving you is that they're giving you the diameter, which is the distance across a circle like that. And remember that the radius is half of the diameter, so our radius would be two. And they're also giving you the height, which is 10. So if we go, uh, so we'll leave those, that data, those data points on the left side. If we go to the formula of a volume of a cylinder, it's equal to the base multiplied by the height. So the base, remember, is a circle. So if we look at it in the kind of mathematical formula, it would be, the base would be equal to pi r squared multiplied by the height. And if you look at the data that we have, we know that the radius is 2. So we would just plug that 2 instead of where the r is. So that gives us pi is uh, multiplied by 2 squared multiplied by the height, which was 10. Okay, so we know that pi squared is going to be 4. So our volume is 4 pi multiplied by 10. Okay. Um, so now what we have to do is you have to remember the value of pi, which is 3.14. And you would just multiply 4 by pi, which we said is 3.14, multiplied by 10. And that gives you a volume of 125.6. But notice we haven't finished because it tells you that the glass is filled 5 sevenths with water and they're asking you that volume of water. So what you would have to do now is multiply that number by 5 sevenths, like that. How do you multiply fractions? You just multiply across, okay? So you would multiply 125.6 multiplied by 5, and then you would divide that by 7. That gives you 90, which is answer D. Okay, folks, I hope you found that useful. As always, thank you so much for your time. Thank you for watching. Have a terrific day and stay positive and stay strong.